Newly filed search warrants reveal more details about the North Spokane mother who was killed last weekend and her connection to the suspect. The search warrant explains how Cassie was found along with her injured five year old daughter and the man suspected of stabbing them both. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Good afternoon. I'm Whitney Ward. Crime 2's Amanda Rowley is going to share more on this and what we know about the suspect so far. Search warrants filed with Spokane County Court today say the suspect accused of stabbing Cassie and her five year old daughter started living with them in June of last year. Her two older children told police the two fought constantly and just two days before her death, Cassie kicked him out. Investigators say the day before Cassie's death, she received 100 text messages from the suspect on her phone. Some of these texts were described as disturbing. Kim Dimitrovich is a close family friend of Cassie. She used to work with her and the suspect. This man has some serious issues and, you know, anybody that comes near him is in danger. According to police, Cassie's two other children were at their father's house in Spokane Valley, waiting for her to pick them up. When she didn't arrive, their dad dropped them off at her home. The children told police they found the home in disarray and at least one car running in the unattached garage. They tried to break into the garage and someone called 911. That is when police and fire arrived and found Cassie, her five-year-old daughter Lily, and the suspect in the garage. Docs say the suspect appeared intoxicated to fire personnel at the scene. He is still in the hospital today. Lily is also hospitalized with stab wounds. We are not naming the suspect because he has not been formally charged yet, but here's what we know about him. He has a criminal history dating back to 2001. Charges include domestic violence, disorderly conduct, and malicious mischief. Kim tells me she worked with two other women who dated the suspect and was aware of his history of domestic violence. When I heard he was dating my Cassie, I tried to reach out and get help. Um, I left messages on phone saying, please be careful of him. And I actually even ended it by saying, I'm afraid he's going to kill her. And he succeeded in that. The charges listed on the search warrant include first degree murder and first degree assault. Police say the suspect is expected to spend a few more days in the hospital, but we will be releasing his name once he is booked in jail and charged. Reporting from the Spokane County Courthouse, Amanda Rowley, Creme 2 News. Well, a new lawsuit has been filed against the Spokane Police Department claiming excessive force during a high profile arrest with a canine two years ago. So this is a case, if you remember, that got national attention because of this dramatic body cam footage. And now that suspect says police went too far and he's suing for more than half a million dollars. Back in February of 2019, Lucas Ellerman led police on a chase after they tried to pull him over for a traffic stop. He initially told officers he had a gun and then refused to get out of his truck. And that is when one canine officer Officer Dan Lesser lifted his dog into the vehicle to go after the suspect, even as the man appeared to be surrendering. Ellerman claims he had severe bite injuries and that officers threatened to shoot and kill him. So coming up tonight at 6, we'll have more from the court documents as well as the city's response to this new lawsuit. In other news, a North Idaho woman says she is the victim of politically motivated vandalism and a warning if you're eating dinner right now. The details in this next story are just plain gross. Yeah, she says someone tore down a Biden flag from her house and left a nasty surprise in her front lawn. Political reporter Casey Decker spoke with her today. Gloria Worm says she's lived here for 17 years and never had any sort of issue with crime or vandalism. But yesterday morning she woke up to just a truly disgusting sight. Oh. Well, there were maggots crawling out and it was just awful. When Gloria looked out her window, this is what she saw. A huge trash bag full of poop. And the stench was just awful. And it was leaking, some of it was leaking out. She says it was so much she had to pay a friend to shovel it into smaller bags just to get it into a truck and take it to the dump. The whole bag, you couldn't lift it. She was confused at first why anyone would do this until she noticed that her flag in support of President Joe Biden had been ripped from her wall. Oh, it's North Idaho, typical. Given the size of the bag and the fact that the flag wasn't that easy to see from the road, Gloria thinks the culprit has to be someone who comes through the neighborhood frequently. The Kootenai County Sheriff's Office told us they're investigating but have no suspects. I don't know if it scares me as much as it makes me angry. Not only angry, I'm sad. I'm sad for the people 
that live in this part of the country that they can't even feel free to, to put up a sign or do what, whatever. I mean, it's just an ugly situation as far as I'm concerned. Gloria says she's not sure if she'll put the flag back up, but she wishes people just wouldn't express their differences like this. I, I don't want to infringe on anybody else, and I don't want anybody else to infringe on my rights. And Gloria says that at the end of the day, she's really just hoping that everyone can learn to live together. Reporting in Hayden tonight, Casey Decker, Crem 2 News. Coming up tonight at 6, controversy surrounding a temporary homeless shelter on the Lower South Hill. The Woman's Club of Spokane owns the building, but says they never agreed to let Jules Helping Hands use the building on a permanent basis. And now the club says they just want a peaceful ending to the issue. So we are really hoping that we can have a peaceful ending of the situation um, and we can get back to our club business. On Crem to News at 6 tonight, we'll hear more from the Women's Club and Jules Helping Hands again. That's coming up new at 6 tonight. Longtime Gonzaga men's basketball assistant Tommy Lloyd officially introduced today as the University of Arizona's new head men's basketball coach at a press conference. Crime 2 Sports Director Brenna Green listened into that presser in which Tommy actually got very emotional multiple times today when he was talking about Gonzaga. Hi, Brenna. Yeah, you could really feel Tommy's emotion in Tucson this afternoon, both because of Gonzaga, like you said, and also because he said this was the only job he'd leave GU for. Tommy thanks several people within the Gonzaga community today, including John Stockton for his wisdom and athletic director Mike Roth, who told Tommy that if he got the Arizona job, that the university would celebrate it. By far and away, though, Tommy got the most emotional when talking about Mark Few. Tommy said that Mark told him that if he got offered the Arizona job, he had to take it. First person I want to thank is Mark Few. Um, okay. I want to thank him for giving me the opportunity to work at Gonzaga and preparing me for this opportunity. I mean, he, the way he treated me, and the freedom he gave me has prepared me to be a head coach. There's no doubt about it. We're going to have more with Tommy tonight at 6 o'clock, including his message to the Arizona alums who were not in favor of him getting the gig. Back to you, Mark. All right, we'll look forward to that, Brenda. Thank you very much. Meantime, some breaking news right now. I want to give you an update on a series of collisions tying up traffic on I-90 right now. Both crashes are blocking the eastbound lanes of I-90. According to the Department of Transportation, one crash happened near the Havana exit, and then another collision occurred in the eastbound lanes near the Thor Freya exit. Now crews have closed the Freya on-ramp, and drivers are encouraged to use the uh, cut off on ramp to avoid the collision. The DOT reports several cars were involved and the backup already stretches all the way to the Geiger interchange. Long delays are expected, so heads up there. All right, let's talk something that's, you know, positive today, and that's the weather. A beautiful day across the Inland Northwest. Today. I think we can all get behind oh, that for sure, and things are only looking up from here. That's the even better part. Meteorologist Thomas Patrick is outside at this hour enjoying the sunshine, and for once, we actually wish we were out there with him. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Usually it's snowing on <laughs> yeah, it. Right. Don't worry, we'll set out some lawn chairs six feet apart, and we can we all go. enjoy yeah. the day today. <laughs> yeah, it just... It almost feels like it can't get much better than this, right? It's mid 60s. The sun is shining. There's a little slight breeze out in the air. This is just about as perfect as April can get. And yet these temperatures are not even going to be the warmest we have in the coming days because they are still on the climb. And even those winds, which a few people were complaining about, even those will calm down over the next few days. I did notice the wind gusts were in that 20 to 30 mile per hour range today. So maybe if you were uh, hacking at the uh, the old golf range, trying to get the ball as far as it was going, maybe it was carrying just a little bit left or right, depending on which way the wind was uh, going from your angle. But otherwise, it is just spectacular across the Pacific Northwest. Hardly a cloud in sight, just a few cumulus clouds just off to uh, my right from our outdoor weather center here. The weekend, not just 60s, but 70s and easily into the 70s. Some areas will be mid 70s. Central Washington is going to be pushing 80 degrees pretty easily. This is going to be exceptional weather across the region. It will start to get a little bit windy late in the day on Sunday, but a very long and dry stretch of weather is out ahead of us. I'll show you what minor rain chances we might get a long way and our next reasonable rain chance for the region all coming up in just a few minutes. I'll we'll talk to you then. Thank you very much. With vaccine eligibility expanding today in Washington, the Spokane Arena mass vaccination site is aiming to give 2,000 people one of their shots each day. The arena site is only carrying the Moderna vaccine, meaning that only those 18 and older can get vaccinated at the site. 
They allowed some walk-ins today, and people said the process has been quick and easy so far. Uh, it went fantastic. I was apprehensive about today because it was my second shot scheduled today. And uh, with the 16 and over thing, I thought there's going to be thousands of people here. But piece of cake. Hear that the arena opened from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. until Saturday. The site also stays open until 8 p.m. on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Now for those who can't make it during the day. In the meantime, Pfizer's CEO says a booster shot will probably be needed six to 12 months after a person is fully vaccinated. Recent data shows the Pfizer vaccine is 91% effective for up to at least six months after getting that second dose. He also mentioned the possibility of annual shots, much like the flu shot. And a big part of that, he says, has to do with fighting off the different variants of this virus. Still ahead on Crampton News tonight, more key witnesses taking the stand in the trial of Derek Chauvin. That includes medical expert and a testimony on George Floyd's cause of death. We've got more coming up next.